Jan Lassiter was an Arkansas bond dealer and a close friend, as well as a major contributor to then-Governor Clinton. Clinton awarded Lassiter a $30 million bond to install a new police radio system for the Arkansas State Police. During this very period, Lassiter was under investigation by the Arkansas police for cocaine trafficking. Intelligence reports show that the Drug Enforcement Agency had opened a file on Lassiter in 1983. The Attorney General's office in Santa Fe, New Mexico, investigated Lassiter for narcotics trafficking with possible ties to organized crime. A federal grand jury indicted Dan Lassiter and accused him of conspiring with Bill Clinton's brother, Roger Clinton, and others to knowingly and willfully possess with the intent to distribute and to distribute cocaine. In the end, Lassiter was offered a plea agreement and was charged with conspiracy to distribute cocaine. He was paroled after one year, most of it spent in a halfway house. He was granted a full pardon by then Governor Clinton. Patty Ann Smith was 16 years old when she fell under the influence of Dan Lassiter. She was still a child, but not for long. In the offices of the U.S. Attorney in Little Rock, she stated, quote, I was a virgin until two months after I met Dan Lassiter. I finally gave in and slept with him. I was introduced to cocaine use by Dan Lassiter when I was 16 years old and a student at North Little Rock High School. Dan Lassiter planned on using me as a prostitute to entertain his friends, unquote. At the time, Lassiter was 40, more than twice her age. She was told by one of Lassiter's cohorts that, quote, if I ever betray his trust and hurt Lassiter in any way, I would not see daylight to tell about it anymore, unquote. She said she met Bill Clinton several times, but he was never acting like a governor when I saw him. She claims to have witnessed Governor Clinton taking cocaine on several occasions. In an interview with U.S. attorneys, a 33-year-old Little Rock woman stated that she had been started on cocaine by an associate of Lassiter's. He warned her that she was as good as dead if she ever told anything about him or Lassiter. As a circuit court clerk, Dennis Patrick's income was less than $25,000. Dan Lassiter's brokerage company would secretly run over $100 million through Dennis's account. When the FBI found out, they informed Dennis that he would be an important witness in their investigation of Whitewater. The ATF soon learned that Dennis's life was in danger and informed him that a contract was out on his life. It was then that he began wearing a bulletproof vest. After two attempts on his life, the police arrested a man who admitted that he had been contracted for $20,000 to kill Dennis Patrick and his wife. Patsy Thomason was given power of attorney to manage Lassiter's business empire while he was in prison. An employee at Lassiter's firm told Dennis that Thomason was in charge and that she could put an end to his nightmare. But the nightmare continued and Dennis was stripped of his life his name, his integrity, everything he had. He eventually fled the state for his safety as well as that of his family. Patsy Thomason was clearly a favorite of Bill Clinton. He appointed her executive secretary of the Arkansas Democratic Party, which helped build the foundations for his presidential bid. After the 1992 elections, she was given one of the most powerful positions in Washington, director of the White House Office of Administration. In this position, Thomason failed to provide proper security clearances for over 100 White House staff members, many of whom were alleged drug users. Under her direction, random drug testing for the White House staff was eliminated.